Hello everyone, welcome to today's episode of 5 Minute Machine Learning. Today I will tell you how to apply k-means clustering and determine the best number of clusters in Python. k-means is a clustering method that aims to partition each data point into a certain cluster. As indicated by its name, k-initial centers or centroids are randomly generated within the input data domain. Then each data point is associated with its closest center. The center of each cluster becomes the new center in the next iteration. The whole algorithm keeps running until convergence, meaning no observation changes its cluster. Without further ado, let's get right into it. Now let's say you have some data. For example, here what we're looking at is the PCA output from the wine dataset. If this doesn't look familiar to you, it's the output of my previous video. So I put the link in the description. But if you just want to know how k-means is applied on this dataset, keep watching. So you have some data, they're labeled as 0, 1, or 2. Okay, first, we're bringing the k-means module from the sklearn. And then we specify that we need three clusters. And then we can use the dataset to fit the k-means object. And then also we can use the k-means object to predict the dataset. Next, we create a canvas and then plot this k-mean prediction. As we can see here, we have three clusters, each very nicely labeled. But the problem here is that sometimes it's kind of hard to determine how many clusters do you need. It's easy to say we have three clusters here. How about now? How about now? Now for some real challenge. You see, sometimes the answer is just not that obvious, which makes me thinking, is there some mathematical algorithm that we could use to determine the best number of clusters? The answer is yes, and today I will teach you two methods that you can use to mathematically decide what's the number of best clusters. The first method we're going to use is the elbow method, and the second method we're going to use is the silhouette method. The elbow method basically plots the number of clusters versus the sum of the square errors. I'll show you in a second what does this mean. The horizontal axis is the number of clusters. The vertical axis is the sum of the squared error. Now what does that mean? So for each data point, we measure the Euclidean distance from that data point to its cluster center. And then we square that and we sum them all up. The idea is that as the number of clusters increases, each single data point will have a cluster center that is closer to it, resulting in a strictly decreasing sum of squared error. Now the whole point of this elbow method is to find the elbow of this graph. Now what does this elbow point mean? It means that by increasing the number of clusters more, we're getting a less and less ideal decreasing of the sum of squared error. So we stop here. It's searching a sweet spot between the number of clusters and the sum of squared error. So on one hand, you don't want too many clusters. On the other hand, you would like to have enough clusters to represent the data. So in our case, we see that the elbow point appears at three. So the data suggests that it's better to have three clusters. Now the second method is called the Silhouette method. Forgive my pronunciation if that doesn't sound 100% correct. For that, we're going to import this module, the Silhouette score. We have this lovely customized function where you can have the input data as well as the maximum number of clusters you would like to explore. Note, the Silhouette method only works for a cluster number greater than or equal to 2. In other words, if you have only one cluster, it doesn't work because what it tries to calculate is the distance between different clusters minus the distance within each cluster and then scaled by some factors, which I'm not gonna go into detail here. The intuition here is that the higher the value of the silhouette score, the better it divides the original data set into different clusters. Now, if we run that, as you can see here in our particular case, it indicates that at number three, meaning if we have three clusters, the Silhouette score reaches its peak. In other words, we don't have enough clusters if we only have two, 
but we had too many clusters if we had four. Now, what could happen is that the two methods could contradict to each other, but most of the time they should yield similar results. That being said, there is no 100% correct answer when it comes to what is the best number of clusters. Sometimes the problem you're trying to solve could overwhelmingly decide the number of clusters you're going to use. For example, in our wine dataset, because we know upfront that we have three different wines, so naturally we would use three clusters. Or if you're trying to predict the handwritten digits, then you would expect 10 clusters range from 0 to 9. Another example would be credit card default. If you're trying to predict whether a credit card account would be default, then you would have zeros and ones at the end of the day. So naturally, you will have two clusters. Again, these two methods merely provide some sort of reference from a pure mathematical way. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And as always, thanks for watching and have a nice day.